Go. Ready? Okay, we're rolling. Okay, this is live. It's going to be another one take wonder from the photo studios at HF17. Okay, I'm your host, Mr. Hayes. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to talk to you about pinhole photography, one of my favorites. And I got to say, I'm really kind of sad that I can't be here to help introduce you to it because it's really, really fun. Um, I got to introduce a few new terms. We've gone from making photographs in the dark room, legitimate photographs, drawing with light, but now we're going to step it up a little bit. We're going to start using a camera. No lens, but it is legitimately a camera. Here's one now. This is one quart paint can. I've made them out of oatmeal boxes. I've made them out of shoe boxes, guitar cases, the little Barbie lunchbox up there by the surfboard. That began, well, as a Barbie lunchbox, but then we transformed it into a pinhole camera. It's Halloween soon. We've used real pumpkins hollowed out. How is that possible, you're wondering? Well, here's how it is possible. Every camera has three vital components, and this is definitely something you should write down. Every camera. This is going to go on the internet. Some photographic Yahoo out there is going to go, no, a camera also has to have, or duh. and I will argue them. The camera has three key parts. The first one is a place for light to go. In this case, it's inside of this paint can. We call that the camera obscura, which stands for, this is a great Latin word, it just stands for really heck a dark place. Okay? Now it's just a dark chamber. And when you guys do this, you're going to be putting a piece of photographic paper in here, the same paper you already have. Ding. You're going to put it inside of here, and that's going to be our little sponge that's going to collect light later on when we're outside. Now, notice I put the top on here, and when this is all sealed up, light cannot get inside. So you're probably thinking, well, that's no good. You know, we want to take a photograph of something. Well, that brings us to word number two, which is called an aperture. It's spelled A P E R T U R E. Aperture. Essentially, it's a tiny little hole. And in this case, it's a tiny hole made with a pin. Get it? Pinhole camera. Genius. So what we have now is an opportunity for light to enter our camera. Very, very simple. Light is gathered outside, passes through our little aperture here, and it gets gathered inside our camera body, our camera obscura. And what's really fun is, is light travels in a straight line. So if you were able to climb inside of here, your image that is being projected inside the camera would be exactly upside down, exactly backwards, a little smaller, and it would be in complete color. Complete total color. And if it was moving, it would be moving. It's really, really cool. Another interesting feature of this very, very simple aperture that is uninterrupted by a lens is everything from the very, very beginning of that aperture all the way to infinity is in focus. Is in focus. There may be some distortion because we're going to put the paper in a curved can here, but if you could remove that distortion, everything is in focus. It's just amazing. So what that means is, is you could put a little flower right here, right here by your aperture, and you could have a tree really far, far away, and they would both be in perfect focus. Perfect focus. And we're going to be capitalizing on that a little bit later. So remember that little principle here. Now we got a problem. You guys already know what the problem is. You just don't know it as a problem. When you're in the dark room, you were like turning on the timers for like 10, 15 seconds, right? 
we were controlling the, the amount of time that light was hitting your paper. Well, if we don't have something blocking our aperture, light's just going to go on and on and on and on and on and on and fry your paper. So the third thing that every camera has is a shutter. And a shutter is basically a door. In this case, it's a piece of like really nice tape. This is called gaffer's tape, by the way. If you're in the theater or you know video stuff, you know what this is. Um, and the shutter now provides a tool for us to like block light or let light in. Yeah, and we're, you know you have an exposure time just like you had in the dark room. When you're outside doing pinhole stuff, when you're out in the big, big sun, the sun's behind you. You always want the sun behind you, not looking at the sun. When you're in the bright sun, your first exposures are probably going to be about 10 or 12 seconds. If it gets a little more you know, dark, you're in the shadows, you might be going up to 15 or 20 seconds. Can't do it inside. If you try to take a pinhole picture inside, forget it. It takes about an hour and a half. Can't do it. So, camera body, aperture, shutter. Every camera has one. Every, even your iPhone right now has those three things. Okay, so we talked about uh, the infinite focus thing. Another key thing that you have to do is your exposure time is going to be at least 10 seconds, maybe longer. You cannot stand here and hold your pinhole camera you move and if you do that you won't get that perfect focus that I'm talking about so put it on something stable could be the ground could be the fire hydrant or whatever it doesn't matter put it on something stable and this is where the whole shutter buddy concept came from somebody has to you know you've aimed your camera somebody's got to lift that tape and put it back in 10 seconds or 15 seconds and you cannot count you cannot go you know one Mississippi two. don't do that you must use an accurate time measuring thing a watch your phone would be fine in this situation for those of you that are like phone and watch challenged I have these these are clocks with little you know lanyard like ne necklace things around them okay I got permission permission from my former student Flavor Flav to use this kind of look okay so I have a few of these you're gonna need a second hand to measure your time and this is where the whole shutter buddy thing came from because one person has to, will be watching the time like get ready start go and the other person will be doing the tape while the other person's checking the time. Are you ready? Stop. You put the tape back. It's really hard to do that when you're all by yourself. So use a Flavor Flav clock, <coughs> use a watch, or use your phone. It's all good. Okay, it's all good. Whatever one you choose. Uh, something solid. It takes a little bit of time to make an exposure. That means some cool things can happen. Now, I have this online right now. It doesn't have the little tags on it, but the different illustrations are online right now. And this is what your final project's gonna look like. You're gonna have four different pinhole photographs. And each one is gonna kinda take advantage of some of the things that I've just talked about. The first one is a selfie. I want you to do it like selfie style here. But you can't really do a selfie with this thing because you can't hold it. Like it's your phone, right? Can't do that. You gotta have some help from your shutter buddy. So you have your shutter buddy, get it all set up, get your time right, and then you're gonna go out there and your shutter buddy's gonna take a selfie of you. Okay? That's one of them. And that's fun. The Polaroids that are up there, the fake Polaroids that are all along the room there, that's where we got this idea. We made fake looking Polaroids and the kids took selfies. It was totally fun. So I've kind of evolved it here. To infinity and beyond. I just talked about that principle of that infinite focus here. 
I want you to figure out a photograph that has something near the pinhole and something far, far away to demonstrate that principle. The next one, I call it, notice the little movie themes here, some sweet moves from Napoleon Dynamite. Okay? <laughs> so, if you have like a 15 second exposure or a 20 second exposure, that means you could have you or a model be out in front of that thing and they could be doing like some, some sweet moves. You know, they could move. Do just all these kind of funky things. You could have one person stand there for half the time and another person take their place for half the time and they kind of blend together. There's all, you know, there's just too much to even describe in a few seconds here. So, some sweet moves, doing it selfie style, infinity and beyond. And then the last one, the last one, this is another step moving us towards film photography. These images are all going to look opposite of what you're familiar with. Because if you know from the darkroom already, when light strikes paper, it turns black. So these are going to be negative images where, you know, where it's black here, that's actually the sky. So in order to see this as a normal photograph or a normal image, we have to take one of these and we'll transform it into a positive. That's what the last one's going to be, keeping it positive. Now definitely it's going to take some help for the TAs, but it's really simple. <coughs> really, really simple. You take your negative image with the emulsion facing down. You take a fresh piece of your paper with the emulsion facing up. Put them together. And then in the dark room, there's a station that has a, a glass easel on it. And you're going to put it underneath the glass, just like a... I call it a photographic panini. Hit the button and you're done. It's really, really simple. And they'll be in there to help you with that. You'll put them all together on a piece of paper that's already been cut. The only thing I want you to add besides your name, date, and serial number on the back is I want you to write a hashtag for each one. Doing it selfie style, hashtag stud, okay? Whatever you want, okay? And that's about it. Okay, I should be coming back before you finish this, but I want you to get started. It is a magical, fun process. Your lecture notes are gonna start with this. You're gonna finish your lecture notes by going through and looking at all the videos and all the other resource materials I have posted on School Loop. Does that kind of make sense? You sure? Are we good here? Yep. Are we clear? We're clear. Okay. Over and out. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs>